Just this week, we've managed to get our hands on a copy of Uncharted The Nathan Drake Collection, and we wanted to share our initial findings with you. We have a handful of performance analysis videos ready to roll, so let's get started. We've seen a lot of remastered games hitting consoles over the last couple of years, but the Nathan Drake Collection might just be the single best remaster we've played to date. This is Bluepoint Games firing on all cylinders. It's an update that goes beyond the typical bump in resolution and frame rate. Here we have all new assets, a new user interface that ties everything together, and tweaks to the core gameplay that result in a better overall gameplay experience. Really though, no game in this collection benefits more from these improvements than Uncharted Drake's Fortune. In preparation for our upcoming coverage of the game, we went back and captured hours of footage from the original PS3 games, and it was this experience that helped us fully appreciate the work that has gone into this project. As you can see from the footage here, we're looking at a pretty steady 60 frames per second. We managed to uncover a few areas with minor performance dips, which we've included here of course, but the majority of the experience moves at a very stable frame rate indeed. Thus far, it seems that the trouble spots for the engine are limited to alpha effects such as smoke or mist, certain pools of water, which was an issue with the original game, and some of the larger firefights. Even then, at its worst, we're really only seeing dips as low as 55 frames per second, and even that is relatively uncommon. When you combine the faster frame rate with the improvements made to controls, however, it becomes clear just how much fine tuning the game has undergone. In comparison, the original PS3 game feels pretty sluggish. It's difficult to aim, and there is noticeable input latency throughout. Combat arenas can wind up feeling like a chore. In comparison, the remastered version feels absolutely sublime. The dead zone has been reduced, the controls are more responsive, and aiming has been tweaked. It makes each and every firefight a joy to play in a way that was lacking in the PS3 original. We really cannot stress just how much of an improvement this really is. He's in! <laughs> Remember this area? It was a pretty difficult encounter, both in terms of gameplay and performance on PS3, yet here it turns in remarkably smooth performance. I'm actually looking forward to tackling this area again on crushing with the updated controls. Then there's Uncharted 2 Among Thieves. The improvements here feel a bit less drastic this time around as Uncharted 2 still plays brilliantly even on PlayStation 3. Yet, there is still a very tangible jump in terms of controller response and fluidity. As with Drake's Fortune, we've played through the first six chapters or so and can confirm similar performance throughout. We see some minor dips in certain sequences, particularly when water is involved, but the overall level of performance sticks very closely to 60 frames per second. You might recall in our preview coverage, we mentioned our disappointment with the lack of motion blur in the Uncharted 2 footage released. Well, it seems that we should never have doubted Bluepoint, as this feature has actually been implemented after all. Rather than simply enabling the feature across the board, however, motion blur is now an optional feature. That means users are given the choice between enabling full object motion blur with added camera blur, just object motion blur, and the option to disable it completely. Even better, the option is now available for Uncharted 1 as well, a game which lacked any sort of object motion blur originally. Next week, we'll put this feature to the test in order to determine whether or not it has a real impact on performance, but thus far, it doesn't seem to degrade performance in any serious way. Let's watch a bit more footage here before jumping over to the last game of the three.
Now we have Uncharted 3, Drake's Deception. This was far and away the most technically accomplished title of the bunch, and it's the one that really hasn't been shown before. Thankfully, as with the other two titles, we're looking at a very steady level of performance. Now some of the combat scenes do run just a tad slower overall perhaps, but it's nothing too severe. In this scene, you might notice the volumetric flashlights being used here. Look at the cones around the enemy's weapons. Uncharted 3 actually made heavy use of volumetric lighting throughout, and it's one of the visual effects that has been improved the most over the PS3 version. Okay, so we're off to a great start here with the Nathan Drake collection, but we'll have a lot more to come. Over the next week, we're planning to roll out detailed coverage of each game on an individual basis in order to really understand the amount of work that has been poured into this project. It's clear that this project was a labor of love for all of those involved, and one that could not have been cheap to produce. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of this video, and be sure to check out our YouTube channel if you've enjoyed it. Until next week then, this is John, signing off. Who the hell are these guys? Shooting at me?